Okay, welcome. Uh, we have appropriations committee meeting tonight um, on our agenda. Um, I'd like to open the meeting. Just uh, it is uh, seven o two. Seven o two. Okay. Okay. On our agenda tonight, first we have open forum and then approval of meeting minutes, uh, the marathon school project update. Uh, then we have uh, coming before appropriations tonight. We have DPW and the CPC. And then um, finally, we're gonna go over our fiscal year 20 uh, uh, report preparation. So uh, first on the agenda, is anyone, any public comment? I don't think so, not tonight. Um, I believe I'm gonna, cause uh, Rebecca Roback, who had the marathon school project update, I'm gonna move the approval of meeting minutes and the marathon school project update uh, after we uh, meet with the DPW and CPC. So we'll move that one up in the agenda. That's okay. Fine here. I'm fine here. Okay. So first we have DP, DPW. And uh, we have John Westerling here with us tonight. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Hello, John. So. Uh, did you have any materials for us tonight, or I didn't? I didn't see any uh, before. Yeah, uh, it's, it. so it was shared earlier. I'm happy to resend to the to the board or to the committee. Okay, is it a link or is it? Uh, uh, yeah, it was shared through a link. And <coughs> it was in the the shared folder, so I'm happy to resend that right now. There's a few of them. Was it from you or from Dave? It was from me. Okay. Yeah, I can't. I can't get onto the share. Um, is there anything that's hard? Yeah, I can um, do that right now. All right, thank you. I think I said David's attachment for the CPA. I did see the CPA. Yeah, I got, <clears throat> I got that information. We'll just wait one second. Absolutely. If you can give me the date of when you sent it. <coughs> sure, uh, of course. I don't want to derail what you're doing there, but. It's March 27th. So say the number again, please. Mar March 27th? 27. Correct. Got it. Okay. Thank you. Is it a large attachment? Uh, nope. It is uh, relatively small. It went out uh, just a minute okay. ago. So you should have it. There's an updated FY20 budget on 27, that's one. Is it just the same 20-page document we've been working with? Is that what you're saying? Uh, nope. So I, I just sent a, uh, just a new document, FDBW FY20 major budget drivers. I can also print a copy out. Okay. Oh. And is this unchanged from the one that was in the shared folder? Correct. Okay. I'm sorry. Can you just tell me again what document it is? Uh, DPW... Oh, I just, I just <coughs> FY20 major budget drivers. Okay, I don't have it yet, so. Yep, I got it. Okay, does everyone have it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so. Let's see, let's start with uh, uh, we, we can start with your budget. 
um, item, uh, was it 420, 422, if you want, just want to describe the changes? Sure. Uh, through the chair, would it be helpful to review the memo that I sent? Because this summarizes the major changes. But if you'd prefer, I'm happy to go through each one of the each one of the budget line items individually. <coughs> Your pleasure. Yeah, just you know, go over the. Uh, that's all. That's what I have. Is the uh, essentially the the budget changes fiscal year 19 to 20 that, that you wrote. Okay. To Dated March 27th. Uh, March 27th. Yes. Thank it you. Is. Uh, in the 420, that's the Public Works Administration salary budget, and there's an $11,324 increase, which covers merit increases. In 422, that's the highway budget, and in personnel services, there's a $31,000 increase, that's contractual increases. Expenses, we see a $98,000 increase, and the major drivers behind that, we have a $20,000 increase in the uh, repair and maintain vehicle equipment. Uh, we have a uh, new, primarily it, that covers a new software, uh, which allows the mechanics to go right into the manuals for each one of the vehicles. So it saves us from sending out vehicles to the uh, repair shops. We have a $30,000 increase in weed control for weed management in Lake Maspinock. Last year that was lowered to $30,000. Uh, this year we're bringing it back to $60,000 because we weren't able to do the eight foot drawdown of the lake this past winter. So we anticipate the potential for uh, additional weeds this coming season. We have a $5,000 increase in police details. Uh, that's driven by two things. One is the rate increase that the police uh, department is charging for details and also there's a new law that the Department of Labor Standards has put forth. It was, became effective February 1st. And essentially what that does is it takes the OSHA safety regulations and mandates them on municipal government, all departments. So uh, we're, we're looking to follow that law, of course, but also to assure the safety of those in the work zone and motorists that are traveling through. Uh, there's also a $5,000 increase in laundry services, and that's necessary personal protective equipment to comply with that new law, reflective gear, if you will. Uh, and a $7,000 increase in maintenance supplies, again, necessary for uh, materials and equipment to comply with that new De Department of Labor Standards law. One of the examples is in the cemeteries, when we dig a grave, we're now required to place a steel plate on top of the grave uh, and also a trench box in the grave when we get in to clean out the corners, which we didn't have to do before. So there's, a, there's new equipment that we have to purchase to comply with this law. Uh, pavement management, we are looking for a $50,000 increase, and this is to approach the engineer's $1.2 million investment recommendation. For uh, This will put us at a total investment in the pavement management program of $1.15 million. As a reference, last fiscal year, uh, we were at $1.1 million. That was uh, originally requested at $1.2 million, um, but we have uh, dropped that by $50,000. 427 Tree Warden, we are seeking a $25,000 increase for additional tree removal and tree management. If I'm going too fast or if you have any questions, please. No. I'll wait to get through this okay. section. Uh, 433 waste collection and disposal is an $11,400 increase and that's contractual increases for both curbside collection of household waste and recyclables as well as an increase in the uh, disposal fee at Willebrader Millbury. Okay, before you go into the next page, maybe if anyone has any questions. Sure. Just one quick question. Did we do an ROI on the $20,000 um, maintenance? Maintenance program. Uh, just curious, what the? I mean, I think it's a great idea, but if we did an ROI analysis just on the program versus how much it saves versus going, uh, we are tracking that. It's new to okay. us, uh, but the feedback that I'm getting initially from the mechanics is we're able to repair the vehicle in house, not pay those rates to uh, to a, a private entity, and also we're not without that piece of equipment as it's either being towed or delivered to the repair shop, waiting for it to be repaired and returned. 
Okay. Uh, and that, that vehicle maintenance and software, that's, that's just one of the parts. Uh, there's, there's general maintenance on the vehicles that we're seeking. Okay. I had a <coughs> quick question on the pavement management. Uh, the 50,000 increase, is it related to you forecasting something in addition to what generally is part of that uh, pavement management? Or how do you come up with that? The uh, engineers that we have that, that do our pavement management plan for us, Stantec Engineering, they look at the pavement condition index, which is an overall measure of the town's uh, pavement in town and its, its condition. Uh, that's the pavement condition index. Uh, pretty self-explanatory. Uh, and what they're recommending is they look at both the pavement condition index and something that's called the backlog. The backlog is how much, re sorry, how much repair is necessary for all of our roadways. And their recommendation has been the past years $1.2 million to keep that pavement condition at least at its current standard. Um, this past year, we went with a $1.1 million investment in the pavement management program. And as expected, the pavement, manage, the pavement condition index, excuse me, dropped just a little tiny bit. So that we don't continue to see that drop, they're recommending $1.2 million. The budget can't support that this year, so we are asking for a $1.15 million uh, pavement management investment. And that's to try to keep the pavement condition index where it is now so that we don't lose the quality of our roads and so that the backlog or the total investment needed doesn't continue to increase. Thank you. Thank you for clarifying that. You're welcome. That's great. Now, um, to follow up on that, uh, do you see our uh, pavement index in par at par with, I mean, I understand there's concern that it's uh, probably not at the best situation, right? That's why you're asking for this. And, uh, but compared to other towns, uh, first part of the question, how does it look compared to other towns around? And second is, um, when you tie it with the growth that we are experiencing, uh, is it sufficient to meet the growth? Because that also brings more cars, right? And more um, usage of the roads. So is it tied to that, that or you think you'll have to reevaluate like next year or the following year based on how the growth looks at that point. To the uh, two parts of your question, uh, how, how do we compare with other towns? Mm -hmm. uh, I will humbly say that we are in much better condition uh, than the other towns surrounding us, especially uh, my wife works uh, in, in Dudley and I had to drive her back and forth to Dudley. Our roads are far better than the roads that I traveled between here and, and Dudley. Uh, having said that, that's a reflection of the investment that the town is putting into its pavement management plan. Uh, and that does two things. It keeps that pavement condition, pavement condition index in the good category. Uh, poor, fair, good, excellent. So it keeps us in the good category. Uh, but also it keeps that backlog low. And again, that backlog is how much we'd have to pay to complete all construction in one year. And it's some $12 million. If we didn't invest as much as we are, we would see that number increase. Yeah. Therefore, the, uh, the, the burden, the financial burden on the town would be greater. So we want to do two things. We want to keep that pavement condition index at least where it is now or improve upon it. And we've been able to improve upon it over the past six years. It, uh, it has continued to increase. Uh, and become better every year. Last year we saw a little downturn because we didn't invest what we were looking to invest and what was recommended. To your second question, does that cover the growth? Um, where we see the concerns with growth is we have approximately 110 miles of public road. As we continue to accept new roads every year, that grows and grows. And therefore the responsibility for maintenance, those mileages, the mileage increases every year. So we're concerned with bringing on new subdivisions, new roads, and it adds to the burden. So every year, if we want to keep pace, we've got to, we've got to invest more and more. Uh, but the traffic is an excellent, excellent point that you bring up. The roads now that are in good condition, the more tires that go across it, the quicker they degrade. Uh, pavement degrades over time. 
Um, so that's why we like to stay ahead of the curve. If you look at a piece of pavement, we like to stay ahead of the curve. Do the routine maintenance, such as crack sealing, that helps to maintain the, the, the condition of that road longer. We don't want to see that drop into where it has to become perhaps a mill and overlay. So you mill off an inch and a half of pavement, put back an inch and a half. That's much more expensive than the crack sealing. Mm -hmm. Beyond that, we don't want to see it to get to a full depth reconstruction where you have to go down a foot and change all that material. So we want to stay ahead of the curve, which is why investing in these roads and being careful about where we invest those funds is important so that we catch the roads before they go into that full reconstruction. And Stantec, what they do is they come out every year, they survey one third of the town on a rotating basis. So every three years, the entire town gets reviewed. And that what they do is they evaluate the pavement of all the roads within that one third of the town. They assign it a pavement condition. Uh, and they also look at then, where do we invest that $1.15 million? They generate a prioritized, a prioritized list of roads based on where they fall and what needs to be done, what monies we have to invest, and what makes the best use of that money. Gotcha. Thank you. I think that, that clarifies a lot. But um, with that in mind, you feel comfortable that it is with the investment and the work that you are doing, it is going to be managed for the growth for the coming years? You asking me if I'd like more money? <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm comfortable that we can uh, stay in the range of good for our roads and the pavement condition index. We could invest two million dollars in our roads. I understand that the budget cannot support that, so we have to make good management decisions and invest that money as best we can. Uh, 1.15 million dollar investment in the pavement management program will maintain the roads in that. Uh, good condition. Okay. Uh, at the number of the index now, I think we're at like 72.5. We have been increasing up to as high as 73. So that little downturn last year, I don't expect us to drop into a 60 range or a poor or fair, but we can stay somewhere in that 72 to 73 range. Gotcha. Yeah, we don't want to spend a lot of money, but we want to <laughs> make sure we have the quality. So what we've done is we've put together, based on the recommendations of the engineer, we put together a request uh, that we're, we're, we're hoping that the budget can support that. And if it can, we'll make good management decisions. We, uh, we, we publicly procure all of the payment services so that we get a good competitive bid and we get the best price we can for the town. And we'll look at what the engineers recommend and we'll invest that money to try to keep the town in the best possible position that it can be for the paper. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, why were we unable to draw the lake down? Was it a dam problem or was it weather? The, the Conservation Commission has allowed for a uh, five-foot drawdown of the lake level and every three years they allow an eight-foot drawdown. And this was a five-foot year? This was, a th this was an eight-foot year. However, we found that uh, one of the properties on the lake had a problem because of the, the, their well. If we went to an eight foot depth, we would, we would cause problems for their well, uh, potentially put their water supply at risk, and potentially cause problems for their ability to stay in their home, uh, their water heater, all kinds of issues. So, we were not able to draw down to the eight foot level. We had to only go down to the five foot level. And it, it could affect other houses as well. Yes, that's, this, is, this is but one property owner that came forward. Uh, but there may be others around the lake that have a similar problem. So going forward, should, can, can we not do eight anymore? Or do you think? Um, oh, we have to spend other funds to. Eight, eight will continue to be a challenge because of the shallow wells around the lake. Okay. Did we have to do, how are we going to do the dam repair? Um, was that related to a drawdown as well or did we actually have to pay more to get people to be able to go where there's water there? <laughs> or is that later on Am I, you know? <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, the town meeting that we had, the special town meeting in February, mm -hmm. appropriated additional funds 
when we bid out the replacement of the dam gate, uh, we had anticipated the eight foot lake drawdown. Uh, but when we found that we could only draw down the lake to five feet, that added another three foot depth of water that the contractor would have to hold back. So that took it from uh, the ability to put in uh, sandbags to the requirement to put in coffer dams. So it increases the amount of water that has to be held back, that changes the way that they have to hold it back, that, that adds to the water they have to bypass. So that's why the price went up and that's why we had to appropriate additional funds. With those additional funds, we will bid the project out in the summer and then next fall at the drawdown, we will be able to, to replace the gate. But it, it will be an additional cost to the town because we've got that additional three foot burden of water. Okay. <clears throat> I thought the town was, that part of the town was on water and sewer. That was like phase one, at least for sewer. Is it, uh, that's not mandatory? Not, not the entire, not the entire area. Um, for the 30,000 increase in weed control, what was the amount you had last year? 30,000. So it went from zero to 30,000 or 30,000 to 60,000? Terribly sorry I wasn't clear. We've had, since, since the town meeting that originally appropriated the $60,000, we've had $60,000 last year was down. This FY19 is at 30. So we're looking to go back to 60. Okay. And how do you do the weed control? I know that was an issue a couple of years ago. I never heard how that was resolved. When we did the eight foot drawdown, now it's been three years ago, that had a tremendous effect on killing off the weeds that were burdensome in the lake. This past year, uh, the summer of 2018, we had a very, I don't want to say weed free, we, had a, we, we didn't have to do anything to the weeds to maintain them or to, to manage them. They, they were basically killed off by that long drawdown. So this year, again, because we weren't able to go to the eight feet, we were able to only go to five feet, we anticipate we may have greater problems with the weeds this year. We may have to look at some of the other options for weed control, whether that be weed harvesting, uh, benthic barrier dam, some other options that are more costly, thus the request to bring that back to the 60,000. Any other questions? Continue to page two. Thank you. In sewer, uh, the expenses have increased to uh, approximately $43,000. We have a uh, $4,750 increase, and that's for uh, essentially uh, mailing the, the bills. A $5,000 increase in sewer pump station maintenance, and a $64,000 increase in inflow and infiltration removal. Isn't it, aren't these like every year that you have to do yearly maintenance type? Uh, For which one of the items? Uh, sir? Second and third, sorry. Uh, second and third. So pump station maintenance, uh, what we're finding is uh, that we are needing to re replace and repair a lot more of the uh, components of the sewer pumps. Our, pumps, our, pump, uh, our pump stations are aging. Um, additional growth, more, more sewage being pumped through it. So $5,000 covers basically the components of the pumps. The $64,000 increase, last year we had to provide an inflow and infiltration removal report to the Department of Environmental Protection. We submitted that uh, and that requires us to lay out a 10 year plan to remove inflow and infiltration. Inflow and infiltration are things like illegal connections, leaking manholes, leaking pipes, basically uh, non-metered inflow into the sewer system. So it's good for us for two reasons. Number one, it makes the system tighter and uh, might identify connections that shouldn't be there or removes leakages, but also that helps to drive down our treatment cost at the treatment plants because we're no longer treating either illegal connections or uh, groundwater that may be infiltrating or rainwater that's, that's infiltrating. So this, the $64,000 is a new item in our operating budget and that's to follow the plan that was laid out by our engineers 
that was approved by the Department of Environmental Protection. I see. So it's an additional operating procedure. Correct. The 64,000 is a new one this year for us. Got it. And uh, I'm just curious, have you experienced those type of illegal connections in the past and identified uh, the illegal connections you just mentioned that might increase the inflow? So illegal connections, that's one of the things that you would look at on a broad brush approach sure. to a sewer system. I don't believe that we have that problem here in Hopkinton. Sewer system is fairly new. Uh, the, the issue for us would be more of leaking pipes, uh, manhole covers that are cracked so when rainwater comes it gets through. Uh, bricks in the manholes that may be, have become loose, the groundwater gets in. So that's what we're looking for. And the $64,000, what it covers is the first step of that plan that was approved by the Department of Environmental Protection. And we would look at areas, we've already gone out and we have put in flow meters in all of our sewer system. And we know where the inflow and infiltration is greatest. <clears throat> so we would target that section we would go through a vacuum test and smoke testing program. And what that involves is we put plugs in either end of a pipe, we put a smoke bomb in there, and we watch to see where it comes out of the system. We alert the, the residents first, uh, but what we want to see is the smoke coming out of the vents at the top of the home. If that's coming out of the vents at the top of the home, that's a good thing. If it starts coming out of the cellar window, then there may be an illegal connection or there may be a sump pump that's connected to the sewer system. So once we find sections, if we find an illegal connection, we would ask them to uh, discontinue that or get the proper permit. If we find that it's coming out of uh, vacuum testing, we find the manholes are leaking, we would go in and we would repair those manholes. So this is identifying the inflow and infiltration and then working towards removing it. Got it. And is it going to be a new addition on an ongoing basis or just this year? It would be on an ongoing okay. basis. Thank so you. this year we're looking at the worst section of pipe. Mm -hmm. The next year we would move down the pipeline or up the pipeline to find the next worst section <coughs> and eliminate the inflow and infiltration there. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions? <coughs> Go on. Uh, in the water expenses, we find personal Personal services, up uh, $30,000. Those are contractual increases. And expenses, roughly $40,000. Uh, we anticipate a $50,000 increase in our water usage budget line item for the town of Ashland. And that's <coughs> to cover proposed capital improvements at the Ashland Water Treatment Plant, of which we are a part of the plant and we're required to pay one-sixth of the cost of any upgrades. Uh, $38,000 increase in contracted services. Uh, we are looking to make software and hardware upgrades to the network that supports the water billing and the water pump station alarm system and our SCADA system. And there's also a $50,000 decrease in the water meters line item because in FY19 we had an initiative to install more meters so that initiative has expired, so we're looking at a $50,000 decrease there. So you completed all the installations, and that's, that's expired because the work has been completed? They're ongoing, yes. Okay. okay. Uh, sorry, yes. just one question. The contractual increase, can you elaborate on that? Is it gonna be every year, or some frequency? that we can determine pre previously? This is primarily a uh, one-year one capital item. Um, when we made the transition from our old DPW facility to temporary operations, uh, the IT department identified the fact that our network that supports our SCADA system and our billing system and our metering system and our radio read metering system was old and antiquated and in desperate need of replacement. So this is looking at upgrading the network. Mm -hmm. It will also host all of our data off-site. Um, so th those, are the, those are the two primary drivers. There's also an upgrade of our, our, our software, some training associated with our billing software. Uh, 
Um, so this is, this is a one-time, um, there will be annual, much lower annual cost for them to maintain and host our data, uh, but this is a one-time increase, primarily, again, for that network driver in the software. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, do we want to go on to capital items, capital articles, sure. or capital improvements? Do you have a particular order? Because the order that you have may be different from the way that they are lined up in my three ring uh, binder. Well, I, ju I just have the uh, last page of the, the budget, right. which has all the capital improvements. So, so the two trucks is uh, first yes, for 100. Yeah. So <clears throat> that, that was um, the detail was sent down an email on 328. Master Capital. Yes, correct. So this and uh, their bookmarks, the pages John's referencing, and the the DPW, the they're listed on page 34, 112, 113, and 114. Uh, but they're bookmarked on the side of that document as well. So before I reference them, do you folks have the capital expenditure description detail list? You said you sent that out on the 28th? Speaking to Correct, me. yes. Is it, was it an attachment? Uh, it was. I'm happy to either go through those detail sheets or summarize those following the FY20 capital improvements list. Yeah, I don't see it. I don't see it on the 28th. Yeah. Last one was part of the total package that I saw, but well, I have. But yeah. Oh, was a part of it? Was I got the one last week for the schools re the school request? I don't think it had more. Not it didn't have DPW in it. Somewhere, so somewhere. Yeah, I don't recall getting getting those forms. Um, no, not for DPW. No. So I can summarize the information that's in there, or I can okay. just give a brief description of each one of the items. I think you can summarize it. I mean, I, I have, we know which items they are, just go into detail. Maybe Ben can send it at the same time. Sure. Still has it. Bear with me one moment while I identify those off the list. Please. Uh, the first one is replacement uh, two DPW trucks, correct? Yes. Mm -hmm. So we are looking at replacing two DPW trucks, uh, S31 at a cost of 82000 and S3 at a cost of 60000 So you see the total of 142000 S31, that's the replacement of a 13-year-old F550 dump truck. And an F550 dump truck is basically a large one-ton truck with a small dump body in the back. The truck has 95,000 miles on it. With It's received $27,000 worth of repairs. It's used on a daily basis, primarily in the cemeteries, preparing grave sites and it's integral to the operations of the DPW division, including snow removal operations. You may recall that uh, back in 2014, the DPW took three of its dump trucks and replaced the rotten dump bodies on those at a cost of about $11,000 a piece. This is the third of those three that has yet to be replaced. So we replaced the other two in previous years, so this year we're looking to replace this 13-year-old uh, dump truck. I'm sorry, the S31, how much was that again? Uh, that is $82,000, sir. 82. And I'm sorry, the 27000 in maintenance was over what period of time? Over the entire 13 oh, years. Okay. There are no other questions. I'll move on to the second. Sure. Uh, S3, this is replacement of a 10-year-old F350 dump truck that has 110,000 miles on it. 
It too has received $27,000 worth of repairs. It's used on a daily basis by the foreman to manage all the DPW field operations, and it is also integral to the operations of the highway division, including snow removal operations. It's also equipped with a 100-gallon diesel fuel tank, and it fuels the loaders and backhoes and sweepers and sidewalk plows while they're out in the field. Uh, the truck is becoming unreliable, and it is not a good use of funds to continue to invest in this old vehicle that has 110,000 miles on it. You said it's 13 years old? Uh, it's 10 years old, sir. And it's a six, 62,000? 60, 60,000. Any questions? Um, no, just, uh, just to understand. Uh, one is 95,000 and one is 60,000. Is there a reason why one, one's lifespan is much like half of the other? Uh, the, excuse me, the lifespan or the cost? No, the lifespan. I think the usage for the first one was 95,000 miles already, and this one is 60,000 miles. So both are requiring replacement. I'm just thinking, why is this okay, different? 110,000 miles, it was $60,000. Oh, $60,000. $60,000 or 110,000 okay. miles. That, that makes it closer. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. OK, I think next item. Uh, the next item, this is an item uh, that I am the torchbearer, but this is not my <laughs> request. Uh, I am bearing this torch for the community. Uh, this is $1.8 million for the second phase of our sidewalk construction plan. And I say it's not my proposal. This, this primarily comes out of the master plan. It's a recommendation of the master plan. And it's also the result of the planning board's last sidewalk survey. So this is looking to design and construct the second phase of a sidewalk construction plan. And it proposes the construction of the following sections of sidewalk. Hayden Row, 3,800 feet from EMC Park to Chestnut Street on the easterly side. West Main Street, 4,200 feet from Lumber Street to Downey Street. So essentially from um, Mobile Gas Station under 495 and just past Price Trapper. Uh, Wood Street, 500 feet from Proctor Street to Walker Street. And that would uh, extend the sidewalks that we extended last year that end in front of the Episcopal Church. Mm -hmm. And the final section is 200 feet on Wild Road from house number 11 to Briarcliff Drive. And there is a, a break in the sidewalk connection there. Again, $1.8 million. Is that, is that just for your work? Is there any need to get access to the property or is that already covered under right of way? So do you not know when that's a planning board committee question? <laughs> uh, we expect that there is sufficient room within the right of way in those road okay. segments. So this covers the design, bidding, construction, and construction services for the actual construction. Is your next item going to be a sidewalk clear so that now that we have all this new sidewalk, we need to, now we need to clear it's this snow removal? Uh, that's coming up. <laughs> yeah, see, yes, I, yes, I'm you're on some foreshadowing. You'll see that. <laughs> yeah. But less mowing. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions on the sidewalk plan? Yeah, just in general, where would it take us in terms of the master plan? Uh, with these, are we going to be... 50% done, 70% done, do you have any idea? I'm not that familiar with the master plan to be able to, to state what that percentage would be. And again, this was the planning board survey that they did. At this point, it's probably three years ago because this was brought forward last year and the year before and wasn't able to be funded. So that, that survey is some three years old, at least. Um, but this is the top priority sidewalks. 
So these are just four segments. There are many other segments below that that received requests from residents in the survey. I will say that the sidewalks that were built in the last million and a half dollar uh, phase where we put them along West Main Street and Wood Street and Ash Street and East Main Street, in my professional career, those were some of the, uh, some of the, that, that project received more accolades than I think any other project that I've ever worked on. The residents absolutely loved the sidewalks, loved being able to push the strollers, safely, uh, safely walk throughout town. Mm -hmm. Is there any um, money that goes towards maintaining the existing sidewalks that we have in town? We have in our highway operating budget, we have in, uh, there has been in the past four years, I think four years ago, we started adding, we used to have merely $4,000 okay. with which you can't do any repair work. <laughs> but we, st we were able to increase that to $50,000 on top of the 4,000. So that allows us to go in and maintain much larger sections of sidewalk. Uh, the, 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 the observation at the time was why would we build new sidewalks when we can't maintain our existing ones? Right, right. So it was that same year that we get the 1.5, that the fifty thousand dollars was put in. Okay. We've and that's done kind of ongoing. That fifty thousand, fifty thousand dollars each year. Correct. That allowed us last uh, in the past few years. We replaced large, uh, long segments of sidewalk on Church Street, mm -hmm. on uh, Main Street, different different neighborhoods. So it's it's allowed us to go in and do the actual repair work. That's that's quite necessary. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we'll be expecting that budget to increase too, <laughs> as we uh, put more down. <laughs> we, uh, we have that at uh, level funded at 50000 this yeah, year. Yeah, yeah. I was curious, <laughs> is, the, is it contracted out or does, is the town doing the sidewalk work? It's contracted out. Okay. So I did notice, you know, with this, the nice weather the other day, went out like across from the high school, middle school, and it looked like it was a relatively new sidewalk and it was all chipping and and it just seems like it's only a couple of years old. I don't know if it was the, calm, the traffic calming when the sidewalks were redone there, but it, it really is disintegrating. And I'm just kind of curious. I'll take a look at that. It's that shouldn't be occurring, but I'll take a look at that. A, it wasn't just one little piece, but it, was, it looked like the whole section that was recently done. <laughs> and I didn't know if... Yeah. I will take a look at that. After a harsh winter, I think it, it, it seemed to have taken a beating. Yeah, I'll take a look at that. And if okay. that's a problem with the way that it was constructed, the materials, and the contractor's responsible for replacing it. Okay. It was in the new section? Yeah, so if it's like almost right across the street from the tennis courts, yep. but not on, on the other oh, side, wow. like Parmenter. Yeah. So, was, oh. so that, si that contractor is still under contract if it was the work that was put in last year. That it, looks like it, was brand new. it looks like it's brand new. I was just surprised how it chipped up. We'll take a look at that. <laughs> Has nothing to do with the budget, <laughs> but... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, and John, what is the warranty timeline? For the contractors on a sidewalk construction project it would be one year for materials and workmanship okay uh any other questions on the sidewalk no not a lot okay the bucket truck uh bucket truck we are requesting 170 000, uh sorry a hundred thousand uh, dollars this is for a bucket truck with a dump body and this would be for a used and refurbished bucket truck uh, to meet the needs of the uh, building department maintenance needs to allow the DPW to remove some of the trees on its own and not have to contract out for all the tree removal uh, and also to improve safety of employees working overhead that are installing flags and cleaning gutters and the like. Uh, and um, those, are the, those are the primary primary reasons that we're asking for a bucket truck. Is it a replacement or it's a new addition? It's a new vehicle for us. Okay. The version I have, uh, Tim says, CIC vote pending. Is it still pending or? I don't want to go ahead. It, it is, this was brought forward after the CIC met, they'll be meeting again next week. Okay. When? So. April 10th. I won't be here. Okay, any other questions on the bucket truck? All right, next. Multi-purpose tractor. 
someone keenly asked just a few moments ago. Um, <laughs> we are seeking $177,000, and this is to purchase a third multi-purpose municipal tractor to plow, uh, snow blow, and sand uh, the, the sidewalks. Uh, it's primarily going to be used for snow and ice control on our growing sidewalk network. The DPW removes snow and ice from a network of 17 miles of sidewalk. Three miles of that sidewalk were added in the last two years if we look at Ash Street, Rafferty, West Main, Elm Street. And we expect to add more than five miles of sidewalk over the next three years if we look at Legacy Farms, West Main Street, East Main Street, Hayden Row. Uh, the DPW cannot remove snow and ice from all these sidewalks in a timely manner with only two machines, the, the two that we currently have. Two men who have to work many hours removing snow and ice from our 110 miles of roadway. Uh, they are then asked to get into those two machines and work an additional 8 to 16 hours to clear the snow from the sidewalks. Now, this is extremely exhausting for the men and the sidewalks are not cleared in a timely manner for the opening of school. So the result is that the sidewalks are not safe for pedestrians and students to walk on and school opening may be delayed or canceled. Do we have staffing constraints? So I mean, will we be able to even fully utilize the use this? We will, uh, because what we do now, again, our entire crew is out removing snow and ice from the roads. When that's complete, we take two men and put it in those machines, and let's say they work for nine hours. We would, instead, we'd take three men, put them in three machines, and greatly reduce to perhaps six hours the amount of time. So we're, we're reducing the amount of time that it would take for the number of employees to remove snow. So you're saying the overall cost is the same, but you just have to add another person. You don't have to add another person, but have another person do that afterwards. Correct. The duration will shorten. So. Yeah. That's correct. And that's the goal, uh, to be able to provide safe travel on the sidewalks and to be able to do it in a more timely manner and to not put as much of a burden on the number of employees that are out there. And what is the, uh, what do you estimate the useful life is one of these for? Uh, these are 10 years, like any other vehicle. Uh, we do have two now that are well, we've replaced both of those in my eight-year tenure here, um, and they are—they show their wear and tear because they're out. If you picture the amount, the the snow that's in a sidewalk, it's not the light, fluffy snow that uh, fresh fallen six inches of snow. It's all the snow and ice that's been pushed off the road, and that machine then has to fight through the snow and ice windrows that are left on the side of the road. So they're, they work long hours, it's slow and tedious, the movement down the sidewalks, and they're, they're moving massive amounts of snow. I remember one from about two years ago, I don't remember the one before that, but it looks like... I think I, rem I remember both of them. Okay. Yes, so yeah. it's the But they're, they're, they're a staggered age, so... Correct. Okay. So if you're on that capital document Ben sent out, this page is on page 114. These are scattered all through that. 162 page document so this particular item is on page 114 of that if you want to look at that sheet is that the sheet too? yes exactly yes so the sidewalks that are cleared you have a set no you have a set like a set of sidewalks I guess um, so you're not hitting every neighborhood, and, and these that you that you're doing are primarily related to those that are used to get to school. Is that how you That's determine which ones could clear? We have over 30 miles of sidewalk in town, yeah. and we only clear snow from 17 miles of those, mm -hmm. uh, and those are primarily sidewalks in the center of town and feeding towards the schools. Cool. Yeah. Okay. So the remaining 13 miles are not like on the tier one category from your. Uh, priority perspective they're not on any tier right we, we simply don't go out to for example Rafferty Road we don't clear that the snow from those sidewalks uh, we don't go into all the neighborhoods and clear those sidewalks uh, if if that were the charge for the Department of Public Works we would probably be asking <laughs> for uh, several more people and several more machines to be able to accomplish that it would be twice on my screen now you mentioned uh, you've seen five miles of increase over the last I forgot how many number of years uh, for the new developments 
five miles of sidewalk over the past three years. Three years. So I have two questions. One is, uh, how does it work when we have new development and we, for good reasons, to serve the uh, citizens of the town, take on the responsibility for cleaning up and all that. But how does that agreement work? Is there anything that is in place as a practice or standard? We have a list of the sidewalks that we currently clear snow from. Um, and when we added the sidewalks to West Main Street and to Ash Street and to East Main Street, those were extensions of the sidewalk network that fed the center of town and the schools. So it made sense to extend our operations beyond that. If there's a new subdivision with a new sidewalk, I guess it might be a petition through the, through the town manager's office. However, there are a lot of older existing subdivisions from which we don't clear the snow. I see. <laughs> right, yeah. So essentially, um, it depends on the petition before yeah, we take it on, or we have a rule and school in your neighborhood. I, I don't know, it, at least in my tenure, we haven't had a petition to remove oh, snow okay. from sidewalks. Yeah. Okay. And uh, with that, do you have any projection of how much it's going to grow over the next few with what we know about the new developments? Well, if um, there's, I listed a couple uh, legacy farms, and then if we extend sidewalks, for example, down the east side of Hayden Row, that leads right across the frontage of the Marathon Elementary School. So we would be adding that as an example. Um, if we went uh, West Main Street, that would be an extension of the existing terminus of the sidewalks in the Lumber, Lumber Street area. So we might extend that. Um, but again, the, the other 13 miles of sidewalk, we, we don't touch. Mm -hmm. gotcha. But, but uh, where I was going is that this five mile, is there any uh, way to quantify how many miles we would be covering from the service perspective? Not that everything will be covered, right? Well, we, we currently do 17 miles, and if we added the five miles, uh, it would be 22. 22. But that's dependent on whether or not we get funding for the $1.8 million worth of right. construction. Mm -hmm. right. So even if we added no more miles, no more miles of sidewalk, uh, the current burden on the staff and on the equipment and the inability to provide clear, safe sidewalks in a timely manner we would need this new machine, in my opinion, anyways. Right. No, I understand. I'm just trying to understand, uh, by the time you catch up with that, how much more will be added? Mm. <laughs> and so, how much more would be added, and then would the town decide to clear snow from that? Right. For example, if the folks, there's, there's only one commercial property or one non-residential property on Rafferty Road, if they came forward, we would have to look at, does the town want to extend its services out beyond its current limits? And then if we, if we do that sidewalk, I'm sure we'll have a request for other sidewalks, other neighborhoods that we don't currently clear. We'd have, uh, then we'd be coming asking for, for additional resources to be able to comply with all those requests. We need is a town bylaw that says you have to clear your sidewalk in front of your house. If we do in the city of Boston. Yeah. What the Boston city? Mm -hmm. Any other questions on the uh, municipal tractor? tractor. tractor. Yep. The next item that I see here is a comprehensive sewer management plan. Yep. And so that's that drops down to page 154 on that document. And this is $170,000 to update the comprehensive wastewater management plan. And that plan is, at this point, it's 15 years old. It's a 2004 CWMP. And what this would look at is uh, reassessment in areas of town that are in critical need for sewer service. It also satisfies a goal of the revision of the town's master plan. And the sewer service areas that are described in the 15-year-old plan must be reassessed to ensure that the limited sewer service that's available meets the needs of the community and serves the area's plan for growth and development. 
What a CWMP essentially does is it looks at the total treatment capacity that the town has for sewer and assesses where existing sewers are and to which neighborhoods we wish to extend sewers. For example, we had, uh, there's, there's been a lot of development in the Lumber Street area and there was a proposal on the Lumber Street area that, uh, that didn't move forward. There's also a hotel zoning district for which sewers are not available. So that whole area of mm -hmm. development down in the Lumber Street, West Main Street area is not within the sewer service area and it's not in a proposed sewer service area. So the development in town has shifted from what was anticipated back in 2004 so what this would do is to reassess all the areas in town, reassess what we have available for sewer, and then the engineers would work with the stakeholders, with the planning board, with the zoning board, with uh, all the various town departments to prioritize those areas in town that need to have sewer. And then we would look at long-term extending sewers to service those areas. So if we extended them, and you're in areas that haven't been developed yet. The way that gets paid for would be through capital, but then I mean, then you've got the sewer fund, so the people who are on the existing sewers would be the one kind of helping maintain that. So it could be done in two ways. One, it could be extended, and then there would be a betterment charge to those properties that it's serviced. Or if a hotel chain came in and they wanted to build a hotel on Lumber Street, and that's in the, the new sewer, sewer service area, then that developer would pay for the extension of the sewer to service that property. Okay. And that's the preferred route because mm -hmm. then there's no burden on the town, there's no right. burden on the, uh, the sewer enterprise fund to pay back the debt. So that, that would be the preferred route. But even if we had, a, we've actually had conversations with uh, potential hotel developers sorry, developers that want to potentially develop a hotel in the Lumber Street area, but they said we simply can't do it without sewer. Right. That's just one example. Mm -hmm. So just having the plan would be enough to Correct. overcome that hurdle. Yep. And it looks at the sewer, sewer service areas and the sewer enterprise fund, it's no surprise, we're gonna be looking at uh, the potential for another rate increase this year. It's a business that needs, uh, needs an injection of life. And if we can open up new areas to be sewered, that we can invite potential development. The town isn't necessarily looking for development, but again, if a, if a hotel developer wanted to come in, site a hotel, they would extend the sewer at their own cost and help the sewer enterprise fund. And this isn't necessarily to promote development. It's also looking at areas of town that are already developed. The old plan from 2004 had areas that the town may no longer want to consider extending sewers out. They may want to service other developed areas. Any questions? Uh, just one last one. How did you um, estimate the cost? Mm -hmm. Do you already have some uh, bid or proposal lined up? Uh, we have uh, an estimate from Weston and Sampson, and that's where the $170,000 came from. If you remember a couple of years ago, the town funded a capacity analysis for the sewer enterprise fund. Uh, it, was, it was a much lower amount than that, but that's essentially the first step of a comprehensive wastewater management plan. You need to look at how much capacity you have to serve sewered areas. Uh, so that's the first step, and this would be the second step to update the entire plan. Right, and would that be need to be followed up by a third one to do capacity for the new expansion again? No, what this would do is to lay out a master plan for the sewer system and look at, again, because we're working with all the different boards and stakeholders, we'd identify those areas into which we'd like to extend sewers or we think that sewers would be a uh, benefit. And then we would look at in the future if we wanted to, let's say, for example, we identified Lumber Street if the town wanted to extend sewers. Well, that then takes town meeting vote to extend sewers, town meeting appropriation to fund the sewers, uh, and then we'd be bettering those folks that are benefiting from the new sewer line. Gotcha. Yep. Thank you. Just making sure next year there won't be another. 
<laughs> no, this this would complete the planning process, and then we would have a master plan. Okay. Yeah, that's good. All right, next item. Next item is a $65,000 valve maintenance trailer system that would be funded by the Water Enterprise Fund. And this is the purchase of a valve maintenance trailer system that will be used during emergency to close water gate valves to shut down water mains and as a maintenance tool to exercise gate valves and keep them operational. The closing of the water gate valves during water main break emergencies is becoming more difficult due to the, the age of the water gates. We have water gates in our roads that are over 100 years old. The oldest ones are 130 years old and can take up to three hours to shut down those water mains. The result is that it takes longer to shut down the water mains. The water from breaks continues to flow, causing damage to public and or private property. It increases our water loss, and it's longer periods of time without water during emergencies. The system will also be used for the regular exercising of water gate valves to keep them operational. This is essentially a tow behind trailer that has a hydraulic system on it that you pull up to a water gate and off the back of the, the trailer is an arm that swings out and it's got a gate on it and it goes down and through the hydraulics and through the, the sensors, it puts the necessary torque on the gate to open it, but not too fast and not too much so that it will snap the gate and then it closes it and then it opens it and it closes it. If we were to have a water break of one of our 130 year old gates, we would bring this out it would, again, same type thing. It would go down, it would set on the nut, and it would open that under greater pressure than two or three men on the top can apply with a, with a gate wrench. Uh, you may have seen them. The, the gate wrench comes out of the ground with a stem, and then there's a T on the top. And on that T, we extend long bars, and we put two, three, four men on it and push until we can crack that, the, the mechanism. Um, so it's used during emergencies so that we don't have to take so long. Again, we had, a, we had a shutdown that took over three hours because the water gates couldn't be operated. So it helps during emergencies, but it also, and more importantly, we go out and we exercise those gates on a routine basis so that the next time we come up to them, they're easier to open and close. And this, so this is the first time we're going to have such system? Correct. This is a new piece of equipment for us. So actually recommend, DEP is starting to recommend this to communities to prevent water loss, to prevent unaccounted for or non-billable water, uh, and to, to keep the system operational longer and more dependable. Sounds kind of complex. Do you anticipate significant maintenance or probably not in the first year, but... Significant maintenance of the of piece the equipment. of equipment? Yeah. Uh, no, we do not. Um, did the... Associated pages come with? Yes. Yeah. They're on page 156, 157, I think. Is it? Thank you. Uh, yes. Okay. So if you look at it, it's, it's, uh, it's a small trailer. It has, uh, the, the basics of it are an engine with a hydraulic pump that go off to a gate. So there, there are very few moving parts, and it's something we could probably get 15 to 20 years out of this with routine maintenance. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Okay, uh, next one. The last item that I have is $50,000 to replace an F-350 truck, uh, pickup truck in the water enterprise. So it would be supported and paid for by the water enterprise fund. And this is replacement of a 15-year-old F-350 pickup truck that has 150,000 miles on it. The truck is used on a daily basis and it's integral to the operations of the water division. It will be equipped with a snow plow and will be part of the town's snow removal operations, including removal of snow from the town's wells and pump stations. Hundred fifty thousand miles, a lot of miles. How old? How old is it again? It's a fifteen-year-old vehicle. That's old too. <laughs> That's old too. <laughs> For a plow, it is. Yeah. <clears throat> Any other questions? Good. All right. 
Thank you all very much. Thank you. Good day. Thanks to the finance team for your support. Thanks, John. Good evening. Next, we have CPC. Henry Kanicki. Oh, thank you. Sorry you had to wait an hour. Yeah. They didn't know if they had told me what time I could have rescheduled. I have a, I have a conference call do it a half hour. So I got them. <coughs> uh, basically, what you have in front of you are what we approved for this year. We actually had 16 applications. We killed half of them. So this is, this is what remains of of the 16 and the amount of money that we that were, that were basically put off or, or turned down was about seven hundred thousand um, dollars pause on these things uh, you'll notice a, a red in two places what that means is there was a change from the original amount asked or the original location and that's a uh, different than what was originally proposed uh, the preservation the proposal one was this was an ongoing type of thing we've been doing with the town clerk to preserve the town records and that was for twenty thousand dollars and we do this on a continuing basis until all the records all the old records are up to date and, and preserved properly the proposal number two was a request for uh, funds to digitize photos of the Hopkinton Historical Society the original request was for 5,000. They came back after tightening up the numbers with more actual numbers at 37.5, and that was what was that is what was approved. <clears throat> uh, proposal four was his, was historic also, and this was uh, for headstone restoration, and we've been doing this in in phases, and this is the fourth, I, and I believe maybe the last phase. For uh, restore the, all the old headstones that were in the in the cemeteries. Uh, proposal eight. This was a dog park that originally was off Hayden Row. It's now going to be at Fruit Street. Uh, there were three locations that were brought in, and they uh, they basically settled that the most effective place and the place that would get the least amount of uh, interruption with the neighborhoods would be Fruit Street. Uh, we, we basically approved the $150,000 from passive recreation, but $20,000 was to, for design and engineering. And the other $130,000 will only is contingent upon them receiving a $250,000 grant. The ninth is a uh, youth lacrosse wall, and this will be uh, at the Fruit Street Fields, so they can practice on a, on a basically a concrete wall uh, for lacrosse. This is uh, something that's common in teaching lacrosse. Uh, proposal ten was to uh, for irrigation at, at Pine Field. There is currently no irrigation there, and it would significantly improve the field. And this was uh, this was approved. There, there is water at that location, so we don't have to bring any lines in <coughs> into the field. Uh, proposal eleven was access and development of the East Main Street recreational parcel. We've we've we in the past have have funded about fifty thousand dollars for study on how to get to a. Uh, to the athlete, to fields that were basically were wetlands and there was no way of getting in. So the study is complete. This was actually, this is actually to approve and to pay for the access roads so they can get into multiple acres that, that can, can be used for, for recreation. This is part of the, for the land that was given to the town as, uh, with legacy farms. <clears throat> and the last item was, uh, EMC playground and it's two hundred sixty thousand dollars for parks and recreation for uh, basically to redo the um, the playground there and a lot of that money is actually for a rubberized surface so it, it, it's more of a safety uh, factor than anything else 
So there will be about six inches of, of a rubberized material. So if, if a child falls off one of the, uh, one of the uh, pieces of equipment, they won't be injured. Right now, the way it's been handled is just with uh, wood chips, essentially, which are not a good solution. This is the same type of surface that's, over, that's used at the, uh, the new school. That's pretty much our recommendations for this year. Any questions? A uh, couple of quick ones. On number 10, Yes. Uh, have you anticipated what is the ongoing maintenance and utility cost for the new irrigation? Uh, that could, basically, the, we don't have an estimate of ongoing maintenance. That came out of uh, Parks and Rec, and that would be included in the Parks and Rec budget. Oh, okay. So, where is Pinefield? It's uh, over towards Woodville. It's uh, it's set off it's set off in back. It's uh, so that's when you you go through a neighborhood yes. by the lake and yep. then you kind of want, okay okay. It was a it was a good it was a good fit. It's a good location. Everything else it just fell into disrepair for years. Okay. Any other so, questions? If I if I may through the chair, um, so. The proposed sources for funding these are um, basically there's a there's a proposal on the floor we have I'm sorry there's a proposal on the table to do we have two different recreation reserve funds one is called passive recreation the other one's called passive act the, pa the passive is is the passive is basically being depleted and will go away. Um, Right, but the basic, so the, the statement I'm, I'm making today is that you've overfunded the passive active, so that's a negative balance at the moment, and you haven't used any of the passive recreation reserve. So we kind of like to work with you to reallocate the, the, those. Uh, we would like to do that, but the difficulty is the passive can only be used for specific things, and this is on recommendations from the town attorney we'd have to transfer money from from undesignated funds it couldn't okay. come from the passive if it's being used for for, for specific items uh, we still need to then we'd still have to discuss with you yeah. the, how we're going to fund this overage against the mm -hmm. um, the current passive active reserve okay, okay. thanks how much is the overage is, and this it takes. It's one hundred forty-seven thousand. Okay. At the moment. Uh, for proposal number eight, can you elaborate on the contingency clause for the uh, for the dog park? No. How the contingency work? Uh, well, the first thing on the dog park, for example, we have we have additional funds coming in from. Uh, that haven't been added, added that, that yet, which will show up in September. So basically, a lot of that will be covered by that. We believe this won't. The 130,000 for the dog park won't even happen in, until probably next fiscal. Thank you. So I have a question on proposal eight, the the dog park at Fruit Street. Um, I know it was moved from off of Hayden, Hayden Row. I think it's Hayden Row, right? Yes, it was off Hayden Row. Hayden Row to Fruit Street. I guess I don't, maybe this is more a Parks and Rec question, but is the expected utilization expected? You know, expected to be the same, or they expect the utilization utilization to be about the same. Um, quite honestly, it would not have it would it would not have have passed if it had stayed in the current location. And we advised them to come up with multiple locations, and they, they did, and they narrowed it down to Fruit Street to a Fruit Street location. My concern was just that it's farther away, f you know, no, no insult to the people who live in that part of town, but when you look at the population density, it's on, on near the center of town, it, it's more populated and more people would use it instead of, you know, closer to the 
Westboro. They felt the, the location was going to be used quite, quite a bit, and they thought they would get better usage because of that location than it were, where it would have been. We left that up to the Parks and Rec to make the recommendation as to the yeah, location. That's what I was figuring, yeah. but uh, you know, when I was reading the stories and, and on it, and, uh, that was the first question that popped in my yeah. head, was uh, you're going from a place that seemed to be, would have been an optimal place to a place that's kind of on the outskirts of the town. Uh, but if it becomes a destination, I suppose, people would use it. It's becoming a destination over there for a lot of things. That's the good. That's the good thing about it. So there's two other pieces to this. In addition to the five hundred and forty-three thousand dollars in actual projects, there's some debt service, and then there's some administrative costs. Dave, do you want to review those briefly? Sure. So we have. Um, <coughs> excuse me. It, it, this is the normal administration. Administrative uh, function, so they have uh, representative wages and regular expenses. Um, Eleven thousand dollars is set aside for wages, and forty-nine thousand one hundred dollars is in so comprising sixty thousand one hundred dollars, uh, and the remaining is for debt service, existing debt service. Um, there's two long-term debt. Um, schedules that have been ongoing that are continuing to be paid down uh, over time and then we have a new one that we just borrowed for some short-term uh, spending that will be turned into long-term debt and this is just the interest that's due so that makes up the, the composition of the, the debt service and so the total um, the total overall for all those components is 288 $89,605. So, I'm sorry, does that include the um, administrative and the debt, or was that less? Yes, that includes all. Okay, includes so that's everything. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So, it's 543 in spending and then the 289 to cover the administration and the debt. And our count is that when all that is done, uh, the balance left in the various pots after we solve this imbalance issue that we have in the act the passive active segment will be 3.6 million three million six hundred fifty two thousand nine hundred fifty seven dollars that's what we'll be going into the next cycle with yeah we we're, we're kind of conservative on trying to spend the money right what is the Current total debt, not the debt service, but the, the total debt. I don't have any other question. What is the debt that's being served by the two hundred and two hundred and thirty thousand um, dollars? So there, there's a Fruit Street. Um, so there's a Fruit Street proposal for athletic fields and building facility, and um, the Abbott land purchase is it like a million seven I'm trying to remember roughly if you know I, that yeah, 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 I, I don't have it but we'll get it we'll get it to you and send it to you by email yeah the lighting was last year well it was approved last year so the debt service for that will kick in this year the Fruit Street building, the Fruit Street building facility and the athletic fields. Well, the original was was the base for the athletic fields. I'm trying to think the base. The original we we basically just put the money in. The second piece was uh, for construction of the building and for lighting there. Right. Yeah. I haven't been there in a while. Did they build the building? Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> you can go at night now. <laughs> well, I thought there were questions that they were going to bring your dog. Get a dog. They were going to bring your dog. There's nothing else thrown in there that I know of. <laughs> I thought there was going to be like a, a recreational building and a, um, 
kind of a shelter or a cell? There was a practice. A practice the practice but building, they got approved, but then they decided it was too small. No, no, there is, there is yeah. like a food thing yeah. that's already there. That right. okay. portion is there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. What we're what the what is showing up here is a lacrosse wall, and that literally is a concrete. Yeah. That that I figured out. I didn't, but I just heard when you're talking about what yeah. the debt is. Um, okay. Any other questions? Thank you. Thank, thank you, sir, for coming. Thanks, thanks for your patience. Right. Well, no, no, we should have had you go first. <laughs> Good night. Good night. So Todd is in here, and he, I guess he did have questions, but um, I believe, Dave, you answered all the questions that, that Todd I, had. I did respond yeah. to his question, so I'm happy to answer anything if you, if. if yeah, I didn't want to respond just because of, it, it, it wasn't a, a meeting, it wasn't part of the meeting, so. Uh, we, we have more opportunities to have a live exchange if Todd has additional questions. Okay. Yeah, that was one of the questions. It's like so, the second question or the second statement he made. He's going to need some time to sit down and talk, uh, talk more about it. So I extended the invitation to him. I'm going to do the school by CIA. It was out of order. Right? Yeah, we went, we changed the order. Yeah, so, yes. Uh, um, do you want to do that right now? Or? Yeah, can do that right now. I'll just do a really like a one minute marathon school update because I am the liaison um, for the building committee. Um, getting close to finalizing the project. You know, school's open, so you're probably figuring <laughs> that was happening. Um, there's a few more bills that are kind of trickling in, so um, we are paying those as they come in, but the um, project manager is now rolling off the project construction um, company has been gone. So. Um, they had 411 students as of um, March 1st, so I think that was more than what we were expecting first year because they got the, that influx. Um, the original budget was about $45.5 million. If you remember, we increased it by about $1.5 million to add those extra classrooms. Um, so total budget was $47,000. We are, or $47 million, we're about $4 million under. So a nice, uh, yeah, a nice great. good news thing just to mm -hmm. say that. Um, so, and I think we'll probably come in right around four million. And then the um, MSBA, they've been doing things kind of differently than in the past. They've been paying as you go, basically. So they're, they've paid about $12 million, actually almost $13 million to date, uh, which represents about 94% of what they said they're going to pay us. And I think the rest comes when we actually officially close everything out and they do an on-site visit and stuff. Um, so, yeah. so Rebecca, you said, and I know we had had an influx of more th students than mm -hmm. expected. That was beyond what, were, what, what required the additional classes? I don't, I don't think they've actually filled all those classrooms okay. yet, um, but the, we were anticipating they would have more students. So I need to check though, because I actually know at the beginning of when they opened school, they didn't, they weren't using all of them. Um, okay. But with all the new students, I'm not sure if they had to add some more teachers. Still capacity, good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good. yeah, it was, it was a good move to it's add. Great. <laughs> Thank yes. you. And yeah. Rebecca, do you remember the uh, delta from what was expected and the uh, enrollment numbers? Yeah. I don't. Let me get that. Yeah, I just wanted to see how many we had. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'll find out what the um, projected yeah, capacity just, uh, is. Thank you. Yeah. I can follow up on that. So, and I'm only here reporting. I was really Pam Wax, so I couldn't all work on this. So <laughs> <laughs> I've just stepped in the past year since she's gone, but uh, she did the brunt of the work for the appropriations committee. So. Okay. Any other questions? Thank you, Rebecca. And now to the next Thank new you. school, right? Oh, sorry. Yes. Uh, <laughs> it's coming. <laughs> so next we had a couple of min uh, minutes that we also uh, moved onto the agenda. So we're going to go over the minutes. Sure. Um, Do we know which ones we have? Let's see. I believe Ben <coughs> signed out for 326. We also... Wayne sent his, too. Wayne's yeah. 21. 
Was it 21? <coughs> For 321. I'm going to start with the 321. Yeah. We're looking at this. I, I move to approve the meeting minutes from the March 21st, 2019 meeting. I will second. Comments? All right. All those in uh, favor of approving the uh, minutes from 321 say aye. 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 Opposed? 4 0. Aye. A motion for the 326. Sure, minutes. I move to approve the meeting minutes from the March 26, 2019 meeting. Second. Comments? All those in favor of approving the 326 minutes say aye. 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 Opposed? 4 0. Okay. okay. So a little talk about the a, the report that is forthcoming. So we're making very good progress on the report. We think we will have a draft, a very good draft done uh, by close of business next Wednesday the 10th. We are meeting on Thursday the 11th to talk on Parks and Rec. So I would invite any comments or advice or direction you have for the narrative now. Uh, by email between now and the 10th, at the 10th when we do the Parks and Recs, and uh, you, uh, and that's, you know, a lot of opportunities for us to, to uh, get this up to speed. Then we think that uh, we would use Tuesday, April 16th, to edit the document, uh, our scheduled meeting, and possibly to approve it. And if there's more work to be done or more changes you'd like to make or direct, uh, we have a meeting scheduled for Thursday, April 18th to make any revisions and you could vote to approve a product at that point. We have till April 22nd to meet the requirement. Uh, so this timeline looks quite good. Okay. And our public hearing is on April 18th, correct? If that's what the schedule is. It's scheduled for the 18th. Uh, yeah, it's for the 18th. Do we want to wait to approve until after the public hearing? Oh, approve the document? Mm -hmm. I guess the alternative would be to move the public hearing to the 16th if you thought you were going to be ready to approve it then. We, we have time to make that kind of a notice and change that notice. Mm -hmm. But we could just do the, uh, the 16th and the 18th. I wouldn't mind doing it all in one night on the 16th. Yes, maybe. Uh, okay. Uh, Certainly, you could. It wouldn't be crazy to do the public hearing on the sixteenth. Right. If if we have time okay. for the notice, yeah. If you have time for the notice, yeah. right? Mm. Uh, we do. We 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 do have ad ample time. For like ten days. Or something like that. For public uh, hearing. Yeah, I believe so. We'll double check and verify that. Mm. Yeah. We Remember, we have Patriots Day. I don't know if that's considered a day or not. Well, it's the 15th. <laughs> yeah, when is the 10 day notice. Yeah. We'll check it out. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I don't know if it's 10 But we could, do, we could do the 18th, and then you could approve it after the public hearing. That'd be, okay. that'd work mm -hmm. fine, too. Mm -hmm. And if there's you know, a lot of uh, support for the draft, you could even consider canceling the 16th meeting and doing it all on the 18th. Yeah holding the public hearing and doing the approval. So will we get it before the 11th? Will we you, see it before You'll the have 11th? a draft. On the, uh, I'm committing to close the business on the 10th. And uh, then we have the that whole period from the 11th to the 16th to sort out yep. whether how many meetings you think you want right. to discuss it. Okay. But we'll be, maybe we'll just do ample posting and uh, make sure we're posted for any scenario you want to play out. <laughs> we'll check with the town clerk and make sure we do it correctly, uh, just so you have the flexibility. 14 days. 14 days. 14 days. Okay. So is Parks and Rec the only department we haven't heard from? Mm -hmm. Yes. Did anybody have a chance to go through the budget? Did they have any other questions? 
know, this is the time to ask or else mm -hmm. it's going to get closer to the end right. because this is pretty much all the departments. But, you know, obviously some of the smaller departments we haven't. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we'd be happy to provide any additional information or bring in anybody you'd like to speak to. Yeah, I think we'll start collecting the questions. I think you saw every department with substantial changes. Yep. Uh, that was really the focus and with the capital articles. So date-wise, we are targeting 26th to, to finalize, right? April 26th? 22nd, 22nd, I believe. Is that right, Ben, the 22nd? I had to verify that date. Okay. I didn't have oh. that, that's the date that's in my memory, and I will we'll confirm that. Yeah, I think based on the conversation, if you, you sent out a schedule earlier, if you can update that, and maybe send it. Right. It's, we back the days off from the town meeting schedule date, and, and our timeline in either case puts us with some buffer room there. Okay. Any questions or any oh, so far? What we seen? Any any questions or thoughts? Budget. No, my only thought is the OPEG and that we're not funding that the way we should. But <laughs> it's just yeah, my little, I mean, it's my, I, little my little my little thing. <laughs> you know, just you know, talking because you know we give we give our you know the appropriations we have our you know our heading our, our you know document. What's our theme, or basically, I don't know. Um, right, the summary narrative. The summary mm -hmm. narrative. And that's what I was asking if there are themes that are emerging that as we prepare a draft for you with some of the technical information, or if there are themes you would like included specifically this year, let us know, or you can let us know after you see the draft. Yeah, I, I, I am very concerned with this budget, I guess, overall, just because, um, you know, before. Tim, before you were here, we, we purchased a whole lot of big goodies for the town and, and knowing the costs and now the drive to get down to basically an overall impact of two and a half percent, it's really coming at a cost and some of the things just in the budget, I know we're not funding OPEB properly and, and as Rebecca says, times aren't going to be as good as they are now and if we can't afford to fund them now what's going to happen down the road, mm -hmm. but also the fact that, you know, typically we do like to use the capital pay as you go with the free cash that we have, but we went beyond that this year in our capital borrowing. It wasn't just, a, we have $4.3 million in capital borrowing on top of uh, <coughs> using our the pay as you go, and I understand when you have a five-year sidewalk plan that that's a lot, or the ladder truck is a lot. But a lot of these other items, we're doing borrowings of that. Uh, they're just pretty. It's a it's a pretty high, and these are probably short term. I don't know between five and ten years. Are these, this borrowing? I don't know if you can if you have thought about it yet of what the borrowings are for these items, but it. We're going to be paying it next year, in the year, you know, in the next couple of years, um, and if so we start doing that every year, it's just going to be adding up. Usually, we were trying to use the free cash for a lot of these types of expenditures. Yes, sir. The the debt service uh, picture that will be in the draft uh, report will, can inform your discussion on that, because it'll show the debt service as it goes out between now and. 2047, which is the outer limit of our current debt profile. Yeah. And so I think it's appropriate for you to look at that and, and think about uh, how that debt is fading away and how we're going to have to recapitalize and replace that debt and what that line looks like. Is the debt line going to be a steady level over the next 
years in terms of current dollars? Do we think our debt is going to rise as we have to recapitalize more? Or is there going to be an effort to squeeze that debt line down? And you want to evaluate this, this capital borrowing in that context? I think that would be tremendously helpful uh, that we are looking for how it's going to play out year over year from the whole debt picture wise. What would be missing in that picture is probably um, do we know what's coming uh, for next year in addition or the following year. Like this 4 million, uh, we didn't know it last year. Right? But uh, if we have enough of kind of planning in some ways, we could have probably pre predicted some of it. I, I think we'll have a good idea of what the debt line looks like with, in three components. Mm -hmm. The debt that already exists, the things that have been authorized but not yet executed, mm -hmm. right, that are kind of in the queue mm -hmm. that will add to that existing debt line, and then what's proposed in this budget. And so you'll have a very good idea of that. What we probably won't have a good idea of is what next year's capital number would look like, uh, when we'd have to build yet another school or recapitalize more infrastructure. You're really gonna have to look at that line as it drops over time as we pay off debt and start thinking about what are our opportunities to do those kind of things in the out years. And we can stay at them in the right uh, level. Probably. And we, we have a goal of improving our long-term horizon for these major projects. If we think another school is a win, not if, uh, you know, it's probably time to start thinking about when that will be. Mm -hmm. yeah. the, the problem here is that with these capital borrowing, these are not debt exclusions. So meaning, you know, especially if there is an underwrite coming, it, it's you know, I don't know if we've done the modeling with this with this debt that it's going to be a. I think it might might be a challenge next year, depending. Yeah, on if you it wrote all this. kind of connects and lines up, right? Do, we do, we don't know that for sure. It's a, uh, uh, I guess what what we can say is that uh, an underwrite has been proposed, and if it passes, it will impact the top line in the out years in next year and beyond and and uh, has there done been any modeling done to show have we done our five a five-year modeling with assuming with an underwrite or not with an underwrite when when does that hit us or is it going to be like next year it's going to hit us no we haven't done that yet uh you know a big factor we got two million dollars this year out of new growth and mm -hmm. we've had steady new growth and uh, a big impact on the top line is what is the new growth going to look like in mm -hmm. the out years? And is that growth going to be restricted? Is it going to continue? Uh, and then there's the question of what the new growth costs. So we got $2 million in new cost revenue and we probably need to better understand what that new growth actually costs us. And there are a lot of ideas about that, but there's not any data on that mm. yeah. yet. I think uh, before the vote, of course, uh, as Mike was pointing out, we want to understand what the impact would be and how uh, realistic or practical from various scenario perspectives it is or just where we are going to be right. on both scenarios so we have an educated vote, right? Uh, and yeah, I think in terms of growth, my concern is that we are kind of paying off a lot of maintenance or past debt with the growth dollars. But the pressure that the growth is bringing on, we don't have enough dollars for managing that. And we've seen on a couple of those that it's pushed to capital. Uh, so that's an equation we <laughs> probably want to solve. Well, we have, we have financial policies that prescribe what we borrow for, or what we spend, what, how we do capital spending. And, uh, this budget is within those guidelines and I think it's appropriate for you to look at the out years and we'll look at what the impacts are in the out years. I mean, we, we added uh, positions this year. We are uh, continuing to respond to the needs of the community 
related to growth in this budget and uh, I think it's appropriate for you to evaluate that in the out years and our, our ability to support that in the out years and we, so we try to do the analysis and we do try not to make the recommendation if you read the uh, memo we had on the underwrite I think it put said there are pros and cons to it and there are uh, there are reasonable ways to look at it from both sides and and uh, we think that's the staff role have we seen that memo on the underwrite or is that something you sent to the board of selectmen it went to the board of selectmen and we'll make sure you get a copy yeah, of it. that would be great all right anything else you want to discuss we need to vote on all the capital articles, right? And, and the budget overall. Will that yes. be at one of those April 16th or April 18th meetings? Or when do, do we want to have a public sense. hearing first? Or? Yeah, I would think the public mm -hmm. hearing, yeah. yeah. So the opening line of last year's appropriations would report was the appropriation committee has reviewed and recommends the proposed FY19 budget. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, I think you would either make that same first sentence this year or not. Right. So I think that's probably yeah. the starting point. Yeah. <laughs> okay. With our okay. notes and <laughs> yeah. points and recommendations. Yeah. Makes sense. And uh, just to plan for those. So we are planning for the public hearing and then put our uh, articles on board for mm -hmm. us, right? So we'd need at least two days probably to vote on all those. Did we did we wait till the end to vote on the capital articles or did we start voting on some of them? We voted on some as we could and there I were others that we couldn't always. We might have, yeah, yeah. Try to remember. Pandered all those motion uh, documents. Yeah. yeah. I thought we did a big pack of them. Maybe been the year before. I remember sitting down downstairs and just going through a full Mm -hmm. it's like at least one, one yeah 25 of them and we had our script I mean a lot of them a couple of them were more difficult the ones that weren't like you know because yeah. once the warrant comes out we, we see that there's other if there's any although we had a special right. town meeting are there any unpaid bills or are there mm -hmm. supplemental uh, supplemental budget or items or something like that earlier in the warrant yeah but we can definitely start taking stabs at at some of these mm -hmm. and, and discuss them do we um, get help from Norman to prepare them or the motions document. Right, the motions document. Yes, um, well, staff will prepare that for you. Okay. Are there any capital articles you have more questions about, or anyone else you want to see, or any more information you want on any of them at this point? And if at any point you have more that you want, let us know. I think we got quite a bit of information. Mm -hmm. um, you know, from the packet yeah. and Ben sorry I, I didn't realize that the, the, the subject of when you sent all those attachments was astro fields oh. so I didn't realize <laughs> we're working on our file naming convention so I, I didn't realize that that's where you had all the attachments on all the capital articles until you resent it I'm like wait a minute I did get that one but there was a discussion on you know because we were talking about the turf fields and, right. and, right. and then it was 150, mm -hmm. 14 meg, 162 pages. Right. <laughs> That's right. But you're putting all those on the shared folder as well. Correct. Yes. Yeah. Right. Which is great. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, a lot of good supporting documents. Thank you. All right. All right. Okay. Are we done? Mm-hmm. Think so? Yep, think so. I forgot anything. Nope, that's it. Do I hear a motion to adjourn? So I move, move that we adjourn. I didn't. I don't even know how to do that. So you guys do it. You're pros. Like <laughs> well, I make a motion to adjourn. Thank you. <laughs> move that we adjourn. <laughs> Second. Second. <laughs> All those in favor of adjourning, say aye. Can say aye. Aye. Four zero. Yeah. Thank you, everybody. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks.